Mrs. Renata Jacobs, Dr. Christian Jacobs, excuse me, Natalie Jacobs, and other members of the Jacobs family, members of the Jacobs Foundation's Board of Trustees, the Jacobs Prize, Jacobs Prize jury, attendees, Chairwoman Ann Peterson, Reiner Silbereisen, Monique Bokertz, and Meinrad Perret, Dr. Bern Ebersol, the CEO of the Jacobs Foundation, members of Off-Roads Kids Foundation, Gal Jafetz Fernandez and Catherine Goodwald of the Jacobs Foundation, Marianne Barnard, distinguished guests, and family and friends. Growing up in an Italian neighborhood in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I learned very early in life that far too many children are exposed to trauma and adversity. Unbeknownst to me at that time, I later realized that early traumatic events can exert harmful impacts on development across the lifespan. Fortunately, my family valued education and they encouraged me to excel academically. My maternal grandparents also shaped me during childhood and supported me during young adulthood and were consistently present in my life. In the process, I learned that caring early relationships can mitigate against the effects of adversity. <clears throat> As an undergraduate at the University of Pittsburgh, I blossomed under the tutelage of Professor Alex Siegel. <clears throat> He helped me to realize that I could succeed in academia and encouraged me to seek admission into top tier universities for my doctor doctorate education. I was accepted into the PhD program in clinical psychology and child psychology at the University of Minnesota, where I spent five exciting years. <clears throat> it was during graduate school at Minnesota that I began to formulate my views on, on a developmental psychopathology perspective. Through, <clears throat> through interactions with faculty, I came to realize that the field had to be interdisciplinary and to focus on the interplay between normality and psychopathology. <clears throat> I was very fortunate to be mentored by Paul Meal in clinical psychology and Alan Srof in child psychology. Temperamentally, I was very similar to Meal. I profited greatly from our numerous discussions over the years and beyond. My research in graduate school focused on the longitudinal development of infants and children with Down syndrome. Uh, Alan Shroff ensured that I learned the various skills necessary to conduct this work. Several other individuals were influential in my development as a scholar. These include Norman Garmazy, who inspired me to also examine the processes whereby individuals who were experiencing adversity act, uh, developed in a competent fashion. Irv Gottesman, with whom I studied genetics and its role on the development of various psychopathological disorders. Byron Eglin, with whom I first began my research and writing on child maltreatment. And Bill Charlesworth, who taught me the importance of careful observation. All of my mentors were extremely supportive and they not only provided me with a stimulating and exciting intellectual climate in which they encouraged me uh, to have my freedom, to be creative and develop my own ideas. That's how I mentor my own students as well. Uh, they also gave me great emotional support. So they let me do what I wanted to do, but they were very supportive. So this background resulted in me attaining my first job right out of graduate school, an assistant professor appointment in psychology at Harvard University, where I sought to elucidate the consequences of child maltreatment. I was aided in this work by the very bright and energetic Larry Aber, and by the wise advice and counsel of my career-long supporter, Ed Ziegler. <clears throat> Although I was committed to this program of basic research at Harvard, I, fer I fervently felt the need to have this research ultimately impact the lives of children, families, and society in a positive fashion. Harvard had no clinic, had no developmental, pro no clinical program as well. When the opportunity arose for me to move to the University of Rochester, I fulfilled the dream that I had uh, since I was 19 years old, namely to build a research and treatment center that would help to transform the lives of kids and families, as well as affect social policy and uh, child advocacy. 
At Mount Hope Family Center, which I directed for over 20 years, much progress was made in helping to crystallize the field of development of psychopathology. Among other accomplishments, several randomized control trial preventive interventions were completed, and my research on resilience from a multiple levels perspective was launched. It was at Mount Hope that I also began to examine the impact that child maltreatment has on brain development and functioning, and to examine whether behavior and physiology could be modified by psychological interventions. All of this work reflects my long-standing interest in neural and behavioral plasticity. In my last years at Mount Hope, I established a Center for Developmental Neuroscience and Molecular Genetic Research. Without my closest friends and collaborators, Sherry Toth, and Fred Root Rogosh, who I'll mention later in more detail, Mount Hope never would have become such a renowned center for integrating research and intervention. It takes more than one person by far. Although we never met, Klaus Jacobs and I share a belief in the importance of combining research and practice and in helping to ensure that all children get the opportunity to enjoy a healthy and prosperous life. Sherry Toth and Jody Manley, who was my first PhD student in Rochester, brought their immense talents and clinical skills to the fore uh, in, uh, at Mount Hope, to, and we could have our goal of integrating preventive interventions and scientific research. Upon my return to the Institute of Child Development, University of Minnesota, I have focused on research in molecular genetics. I have written papers on gene-environment interaction and begun research on the effects of maltreatment on gene expression. I have continued to work closely, very closely, with my colleagues at Mount Hope Family Center on research investigating stress neurobiology and resilient functioning, as well as genetic contributors to resilience. Exciting new research supported by the Jacobs Foundation will focus on neuroimaging correlates of resilience, genetic moderation of large-scale interventions uh, for depressed adolescents, and epigenetic studies of the effects of maltreatment on DNA methylation and gene expression in both basic and intervention research. My life, both personally and professionally, has been a journey. There have been peaks, there have been valleys. Standing before you as a recipient of the Klaus J. Jacobs Research Prize is definitely one of the high peaks in my life. I'm humbled by this honor. Um, there's so many great people, really. Um, and I never would have been able to get, even be considered for this honor without the support of myriad individuals in my life. I especially want to single out my grandmother, my sister Gina, who is here today with my nephew and her son, Rusty. Would you stand, please, briefly, Gina? <laughs> Rusty. <laughs> Sherry Toth, who's the current director of Mount Hope, and Fred Rogosh. I would like Sherry and Fred, to please stand. I, I, I also want to thank Marion Gershel for her friendship, inspiration, and loyalty. I want to thank the Jacobs Foundation and the wonderful and talented individ individuals on the foundation staff with whom I have been working. Great thanks are due to uh, Axel Wagner and Ben Kaiser for their superb work on the film, and to Catherine Gutwald for shepherding me through this process and helping me big time along the way. I also am indebted to many colleagues and students with whom I had the good fortune to work over the past decades. I'm also grateful to the federal and private granting agencies who have funded and supported, supported my research. Finally, <clears throat> I wish to extend my sincere appreciation to um, the folks who, who agreed to come and participate in the Frontier Symposium. Ann Maston, who's been a very dear friend of mine for over 35 years and a great colleague, my closest friend in Minneapolis, for sure. Um, Christine Heim and uh, Ulrika Ellert, whose work I greatly admire, and I'm very honored that you accepted the invitation to come. Um, and of course, Sir Michael Rudder, 
who had. I want to embarrass him, but really, Michael, you've been a major inspiration to me throughout my entire uh, research career. Uh, and finally, to Alexandra Freund, who graciously worked with me on organizing the speakers for the Research Frontiers and Human Development Symposium, Symposium, and she was extraordinarily helpful. I thank all of you in attendance at this award ceremony. <clears throat> I am um, I can assure members of the foundation, those individuals who have never wavered in their belief in me, and the far too many children who continue to suffer from traumatic experiences, that I will utilize the Klaus J. Jacobs Research Prize to conduct research and to promote interventions and policies that foster resilient outcomes for vulnerable children and families. I am dedicated to helping Klaus Jacobs sustain his vision of promoting positive development for all children. Thank you very much. <laughs>